नमस्ते अगेन नाउ दिस इज अवर सेकेंड सेशन दैट इज नोन एज बेसिक योगा प्रैक्टिस सो वी विल स्टार्ट एज पर अवर ट्रेडिशन विद द प्रेयर सो सिटिंग कंफर्टेबल एंड स्ट्रेट आई इज जेंटली क्लोज हैंड्स इन नमस्कार मुद्रा प्रेयर पोजिशन स्लोली इनहेल सहनावतु सहनो भुना सह वीर करवाह तेजस्वीनावधीतमस्त मिद्विषा वह शाति 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 स्लोली रिलीज युअर हैंड्स एंड यू कैन ओपन युअर आईज वी हैव स्वरूप विथ अस फॉर द डेमोन्स्ट्रेशन सो आई रिक्वेस्ट स्वरूप टू स्टार्ट अवर बेसिक योगा प्रैक्टिस फर्स्ट we are going to start with supine position there are four types of asana practices which we are going to introduce you that is lying down on the back supine then lying down on the abdomen that is prone lying then sitting and then standing because that is the sequence of the nature so please lie down on the back in supine position come to the starting position in starting position that means your legs are together hands close to the hips palms facing down keeping your shoulders hands neck and face relaxed face also relaxed that is important and then keeping your whole body active knees are straight very slowly you are going to lift your right leg up to 30 degree we are proceeding for ardha halasan with one leg ardha means half half plow pose ardha halasan take a pause at 30 degree then try for 45 degree keeping your knee straight those who are beginners doing it first time for them as per your capacity you can maintain you can uh, reach up to your capacity maybe 40 degree maybe 30 degree maybe 60 or 70 now reach up to 60 degree and now if it is possible to reach up to 90 degree so ideally your leg should go up to 90 degree keeping your knee straight maintain for some time as per your capacity breathing continue in the final position and then slowly come back release up to 60 degree first take a pause there then step by step in reverse order come back 45 degree 30 degree and then on the ground so this ardha halasan with one leg after releasing your leg should remain together in the same way now you will proceed with the left leg very slowly lifting your left leg step by step without jerk as the definition by maharshi patanjali given for asana is sthir sukham asanam so without jerk prayatna shaithilya ananta samapattitya there should be a shithilta easiness no jerk no force okay this um, ardhalasan is very good for those who are having varicose veins good to improve your digestive capacity good for diabetes so it diverts your blood circulation from the lower limbs because of the gravity towards the important body organs of the abdominal region and your abdominal region is getting massage natural massage because of the because of the pressure so this is ardhalasan with one leg after few normal breath now we will proceed for ardha pavan muktasan as this is the basic class so we are practicing half postures ardha means half pavan muktasan also half means with one leg very slowly bend at your right knee first then take your right knee towards the chest so your foot is going off the ground then making a finger lock hold your right leg exactly below the knee then pull the knee towards your chest with the support of your hands but keep your keep your neck and shoulders relaxed pressing your thigh on the abdomen with your hands breathing continue in the final position this is ardha pavan muktasan because of the pressure created on the abdomen it will stimulate your all the internal organs of the abdominal region it is also 
stimulating your peristalsis movement of the intestine that is why good for digestive disorders like indigestion constipation gases problem okay slowly release release the finger lock first then release your leg and then after that we will repeat this practice with the left leg ardha pawan muktasan half wind releasing or gas releasing pose the name of the asana is wind releasing or gas releasing pose so those who are in gases problem for them it is very helpful it will improve your digestive capacity so you won't have any problem like indigestion or acidity gases so those problems you won't have good for diabetes also it stimulates your pancreatic functions kidney functions after practicing with the left leg also then you will release your leg and coming to the starting position after that we are proceeding for uh, next practice that is twisting asana because uh, after this pawan uh, muktasan now it is necessary to twist yourself so that you can cover up the remaining two movements of the spine pawan muktasan is forward stretching now we are going for the twist so spread your hands at the shoulder level by the sides ideally palms facing down but those who are having stiffness in the shoulders or pain in the shoulders because of maybe because of frozen shoulder like that then you can adjust the position of your palms okay now bend at your right knee then place your right foot over the left knee left knee will remain straight as it is only right foot is resting on the left knee and then slowly twisting your lower body to the left side and face to the right side right shoulder and hand will remain on the ground keeping your shoulder and hand on the ground twist maximum as per your capacity don't go beyond the capacity see the demonstrator uh, is a regular practitioner so he is able to twist all the way and uh, he is able to touch the knee on the ground to the other side but don't um, don't try to compete it with the others okay look at yourself after maintaining for some time maybe 10 to 12 seconds or 15 seconds then slowly you will derotate come in center after releasing your right leg regroup yourself and then proceed with the left leg in the same way bending at the left knee foot on the right knee and then twisting lower body to the right and face to the left we are practicing merudanda abhyas the name of the asana is merudanda means a vertebral column merudanda abhyas this twisting merudanda abhyas is also very good for diabetes then it is very good for any kind of spinal problems slip disc sciatica okay lumbar spondyla uh, spondylitis or cervical spondylitis for such kinds of problems this asana is very effective very good right now take rest for some time in shavasana okay. in shavasana your legs little apart one to one and a half feet away from each other hands little away from your hips 6 to 8 inches away from your hips and palms facing to the ceiling eyes are closed so taking rest after one or two asana or three asanas is also important because when you are performing asana practice that time particular muscles or organs of the body are getting activated they are working out they are getting contracted or stretched so after that giving rest to the org those organs or to those muscles is also necessary so that they will get ready for the next practice easily and you won't feel any tiredness after taking rest now we are going uh, to proceed further for some prone lying asana practices lying down on the stomach so again getting ready then taking a left side turn come on the abdomen in a prone lying position in prone lying position the starting position is your legs together toes pointed back forehead on the ground and hands are straight close to the hips palms facing down this is the starting position now the first practice in the prone lying position is bhujangasana but bhujangasana as a basic class beginners class we are practicing bhujangasana in a very simple way okay 
For that, you are first stretching your hands in front of you. And after that, bending at the elbows, taking support of your elbows, you are going to lift your upper body, your face, chin, shoulders, chest, abdominal region. And so that your elbows will rest on the ground, elbows and forearms will rest on the ground. Upper body weight you are, you are going to take on the elbows, not on the palms. So this is with the full support, simple Bhujangasana. Those who are having back problems, sleep days, sciatica, for them this asana is very effective, very good because of the contraction in the spinal muscles, back muscles, it will help them to cure those problems. Good for diabetes also, good for gases problem, good for digestive disorders, Bhujangasana, Cobra pose, slowly come back. After releasing, again release your hands also by the sides of the hips. So coming to the starting position. Now the next practice is Ardha Shalabhasan, Ardha half, Shalabha, locust. Okay, like a locust or like a grasshopper, you are going to lift your lower body, but Ardha means with one leg. Hmm. So slowly open your chin out, resting your chin on the ground and then close your fists and place your fists below the thighs. That will give the support to lift your lower body or to lift your leg. And then slowly keeping your knee straight, lift your right leg straight without bending the knee from the hip thigh joint without tilting the pelvis. Maintain the alignment of your body. Breathing continue, keeping your knees straight. Imagine somebody is pulling your leg behind you in that way, reaching through the toes. Slowly release. Then in the same way, lift your left leg. We are practicing Ardha Shalabhasan, half locust pose. This is also very good for back problems. It will strengthen your spinal muscles, lower back muscles, buttocks, that means glutes, hamstrings, they are getting strengthened by practicing this asana. Slowly release. And the maintenance final uh, position time that we, you will increase day by day after the practice, not in the beginning. Okay, then you can reach, go up to 30 seconds or 40 seconds or you can maintain the final position. Okay, after this, now you are going to practice uh, Marjarasan, cat pose, in which you are supposed to come on your palms and knees on all fours. In such a way that your palms will be exactly below the shoulders and knees will be exactly below the hips. Or in the other language, we can say that your both the hands and both the thighs should be perpendicular to the ground, right angle at the knee joint. Okay, now this is your normal position of the spine. From here, with the slow, controlled and deep inhale, you are pressing your spine down and lifting the head up and shoot the tailbone, tailbone out, tilting the pelvis. That means you are giving backward stretch to the spine, opening the chest. This is with inhale. Now very slow and controlled, long exhale, you are lifting your spine up, back up and head down, shooting the tailbone in. Squeezing your buttocks. This is forward stretch to the spine. Again with long and controlled inhale, stretch back, spine down, head up, shooting the tailbone out. And then with long and controlled exhale, back up, spine up and head down, shooting the tailbone in. And one more you will repeat at your own. In this way, you can repeat 5 times, 8 times, 10 times. Very good for backward, uh, spinal problems, back pain, slip days, sciatica. In such problems, this is very helpful. It will improve the articulation of the spine. Your spine will become supple, flexible. It will remove the stiffness of your spine. We are practicing Marjarasan. Marjara means a cat, cat pose. Almost all the asanas are named in Sanskrit language. That is why those asana practices or asana names are in Sanskrit. 
after practicing this marjar asan as it is you are joining your legs together knees together big toes together heels will remain apart and you are sitting back on your heels that is known as vajrasan if somebody is having knee problems osteoarthritis or any uh, pain in the knee then avoid to sit in vajrasan then you can sit in a cross leg or in a simple sukhasan sitting straight looking in front of you at the eye level we will proceed for parvatasan now mountain pose take your hands by the sides of the body first then slowly stretch your hands at the shoulder level by the sides then turn your palms towards the ceiling and then circle your hands towards the ceiling with deep inhale after stretching your hands towards the ceiling join your palms together and close your eyes this is parvatasan mountain pose it is giving a natural traction to your spine you are stretching yourself against the gravity so it gives traction to the spine pressure on the intervertebral disc is getting released so very very effective very good for any kind of spinal problem cervical or lumbar spondylitis back pain etc now very slowly in a reverse order step by step come back after practicing this vajrasan now open your legs in front one by one right leg will come from right side and left leg from left side and sitting in dandasan danda means a stick so like a stick your legs should remain straight and your body should remain straight this is known as dandasan it looks very easy but when you will practice it you will understand how it is difficult okay now sitting in dandasan we are going for the twisting practice that is known as vakrasan again bending at your right knee in such a way that your heel will come to the left knee only don't take your heel close to the hip then right hand goes behind you at the middle of the spine then cross your other hand means left hand to the right thigh crossing it either you can rest your palm on the ground or crossing it you can try to catch hold of your big toe right big toe with your left hand and then all the way twist to your right side looking behind you at the shoulder level behind you so this is known as vakrasan twist pose in the tradition actual twisting asana is matsendrasan purna matsendrasan but it is very difficult that is why Uh, traditionally uh, in the tradition they simplified that asana in ardha matsendrasan but ardha matsendrasan is also very difficult that is why swami kolananda founder of kavaladham he invented this vakrasan now slowly come back step by step in reverse reverse order that means you are releasing your head first then left hand then right hand and then right leg then in the same way with your left leg bending at the left knee then left hand goes behind you for the support the hand going which is going behind you should be exactly at the middle of the spine so that your body your torso will remain straight perpendicular to the ground and twisting maximum as per your capacity in the beginning you may not be able to cross the hand or you may not be able to hold the big toe or place it on the ground in that case you can just hold the knee or hold the leg only at the elbow we are practicing vakrasan slowly come back in reverse order this vakrasan is also very good for back pain spinal problems and good for diabetes twisting asana all twisting asanas are good for diabetes after releasing now relax in sitting position for some time that is vishramasan taking support of your hands behind you and legs apart eyes closed this is vishramasan after taking rest for some time now it's time to practice some standing asanas slowly come in standing now first standing practice is 
कटि चक्रासन इन विच यू आर टेकिंग लिटिल डिस्टेंस इन योर लेग्स अराउंड सिक्स टू एट इंचेस अवे फ्रॉम इच अदर फीट पैरल टोज आर पॉइंटेड इन फ्रंट देन स्ट्रेच योर हैंड्स इन फ्रंट ऑफ यू एट द शोल्डर लेवल Keep your hands at the shoulder level, bending at your left hand at the elbow, and rest your palm on the right shoulder. Don't drop your elbow down, and then slowly twisting to your right side all the way. Complete twisting. Turn your face also and look at your right hand, but don't turn your feet. Feet should be anchored down. Knees should remain straight. Breathing continue in the final position. Don't hold the breath. Kati means a lumbar region, so it is very good for lumbar region. Kati chakrasan, good for lumbar spine. Slowly come back, derotate. After coming in center, stretch your left hand at the shoulder level in front, and then bending at the right hand, right palm on the left shoulder, and twist to the left from the other side. this is also good for any spinal problem back pain good for diabetes come back really after twisting that is kati chakrasan now we are going for side bending so for that keeping your legs together or if you are not able to balance yourself properly then you can keep uh, your feet little apart then you are taking your right hand at the shoulder level by the side turn your palm towards the ceiling circle it up take your hand towards the ceiling straight so that your shoulder will touch to the ear keep looking at the eye level in front of you without rotation only side bending bend to the left side so that you will get stretch to the right side of the torso this side bending chakrasan is also invention by swami kolananda that is the speciality of this practice because in the tradition we don't have any side stretching asana slowly come up lengthen up this side stretching asana or side bending asana is very effective uh, in the one of the spinal problem known as scoliosis yeah so you can practice that's uh, this side bending chakrasan one time or 30 seconds or one time in one side same side of the scoliosis and twice from the other side opposite of the scoliosis now try with the other side with your left hand as i told you we say yoga practice not yoga exercise that is why yoga practices should be very slow without jerk traditionally and scientifically also come back slowly day by day when you will become a practitioner then you can increase the uh, maintenance time of the final position after side stretching now one stretching that is known as tadasan palm tree pose that is a body mind coordination in which again your feet can be together can be little apart it is up to you ideally they should be together concentrate in front of you at eye level or on any non moving object which is comfortable for you and then slowly stretching your both the hands by the sides at the shoulder level then turning your palms to the ceiling circle them up to the ceiling making a finger lock turning the palms towards the ceiling then stretch up and lift your heels and try to balance on your toes it improves your body mind coordination for the kids it is very good to increase the height in general it is very good to improve your concentration but to maintain and perform this asan you need a concentration slowly release your heels and then in a reverse order release your hands this is tadasan palm tree pose 
After practicing those basic asanas, some basic asanas, now come in sitting. Sit comfortable in any position in which you will be able to sit straight. Sitting straight is important. We are going towards some breathing practices. Eyes remain closed, hands resting on your knees. Sitting straight and comfortable with closed eyes. Only observe the changes and effects of all those yoga practices you have gone through. In which parts, joints, organs, muscles you got the stretch or contraction or any pain, uncomfort, easiness or you enjoyed that posture, that asana, whatever. Just try to observe the changes and effects of those practices. From the tip of the toes to the top of the head, mentally scan your body and try to observe. Then come to the breathing. Observe your breathing process, normal, natural breathing process, how it is happening, how it is going on. Your normal and natural speed of the breath and depth of the breath. How fast and how deep your breathing is happening. So here it's a natural breathing. You are not controlling it. Now you are going to control your breath. That means you are going to take a deep, slow, controlled and deep inhale. And slow, controlled and deep exhale. Three times. You can count the numbers in your mind during inhalation and during exhalation. And after three deep breath, we are going to practice a very simple pranayam and very effective, very popular pranayam that is Brahmari Pranayam. Only five rounds of Brahmari Pranayam in which you are going to inhale through the nose, exhale through the nose, but during exhalation you are going to produce a humming sound of a honeybee. So slowly inhale. Mm. Eyes remain closed. Try to feel the same vibrations with closed eyes.
observe the silence peace calmness coolness pleasure and happiness feel the positive energy around you and within you and from here the journey of meditation starts Welcome to Heartfulness Meditation. Please approach this meditation with an attitude of openness to fresh experience. Heartfulness Meditation is aided by a very subtle transformative energy called Pranahuti or Transmission. Choose a place where you can meditate without being distracted. Turn off your phone or any device that may disturb you. Make sure you're sitting comfortably. You can sit cross-legged or in a chair. Let your hands rest in your lap, loosely clasped. Let your eyes be closed gently. Let your back be upright but not rigid. Feel free to change your posture during meditation if you feel uncomfortable. We will begin with the simple practice of heartfulness relaxation. Once you feel relaxed, you will be guided into the heartfulness meditation. We will all meditate together in silence so we may feel the peace that surfaces when we turn our attention inward and dive deep into our hearts through the heart we find unity through the heart we create a feeling of well-being first relax close your eyes very gently very softly We will begin with our toes. Move your toes. Relax them. Imagine the soothing, healing energy from the earth moving up into your feet, slowly relaxing them. Feel it relax your toes, the soles of your feet, your ankles. As this energy moves upwards, relax your calves, relax your knees. Feel it relax each and every muscle in your thighs deeply. Feel both your legs becoming totally relaxed. Relax your stomach, your waist, your hips. Let go of any tension or stress you may be holding there. And relax. Allow your back to soften. From your tailbone to your shoulders. Feel your entire back relaxing. Relax your chest. Relax your shoulders. Let this healing energy from the earth melt away any tension or stress you may be holding on your shoulders. Feel your shoulders melt away and relax. As this energy moves down your arms, relax them. 
Feel it relax your upper arms, your elbows, your forearms, your wrists, your hands. Let the energy flow out of your fingertips, leaving both your arms deeply relaxed. Relax all the muscles in your neck. Bring your awareness to your face and relax it. Feel the healing energy from the earth. Relax your jaws, your mouth, your lips. Feel your ears relax. Breathe normally, relax your nose, keep your eyes softly closed, relax them. Relax your forehead, feel all the tension, stress and anxiety there simply melt away. As this healing energy from the earth moves further upwards, relax your entire head all the way to the base of your skull. Feel now how your whole body is totally relaxed. Take a moment, scan your system from top to toe. And if there is any part of your body that is still dense, painful or unwell, feel it being immersed in the healing energy of the earth for a little while longer. When you're ready, move your attention to your heart. Rest there for a little while. Feel immersed in the love and light in your heart. Now, we will meditate together. Make a suggestion that the source of divine light that is already present inside your heart is attracting your attention towards it. Gently relax into that feeling. Let it be a very light suggestion, without force or concentration. If you find your awareness drifting to other thoughts, do not fight them but also do not entertain them. Let them be like clouds passing in the sky. Gently remind yourself that you're meditating on the source of divine light in your heart. Be open and receptive to the transmission that will be flowing into you. Allow your awareness to melt into your heart. Remain absorbed within your heart until you hear the meditation has ended. Please start meditation.
That's all. Keep your eyes closed for a little while longer and tune in to how you feel. Absorb all the peace that you have experienced. Now, imagine that this peace is expanding outward to everyone uniting everything around you and is encircling the world. When you open your eyes, take the time to enjoy the experience. You can write your experience in a journal. It will help you to develop awareness and observation. We thank you for expanding this feeling of peace, unity and well-being around the world.